Hi, my name is Valerie Gill. Um, a lot of people on the internet might know me as Curly Sauce. I'm both a YouTuber slash illustrator and animator. Um, I tend to do a lot of works that involve a lot of things, so I tend to dabble in a lot, like movies, music, and um, drawings as well. Um, when it comes to drawing, though, I think my main media <laughs> are definitely um, ink quills and watercolor. I like to definitely stay there, somewhere that keeps me both on the technical and loosey-goosey side. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite thing. It's a little marker thingy from Daiso. It's the best. Look at this. Mm, mm. You know what I like about it? You can go whoosh, and you can also go boop, 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 boop. Um, I don't know. I don't think I have like one primary source. I think I pull from a lot of different areas, but it really just depends on what I'm working on. Um, you know, definitely for like if I'm writing, then I definitely look towards um, writers like Louis Zakhar, who have this whimsical storytelling to them. Um, stylistically though, when I'm drawing or illustrating, I do tend to find myself going back to older versions of Tim Burton's artworks. I think a lot of people tend to look towards the, um, the happy and, um, I don't know, fairy tale sort of way of telling stories, and I feel you can still get some of those same points across, but when they're surrounded by like all this creepy and doom and gloom, then they tend to shine a little bit more than when they're just surrounded by other cutesy stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily have a process still. I feel like I'm definitely still in a point where I kind of do every project a little differently because, I don't know, the way I imagine it. When you do a project, it's sort of like you're breathing life into something and well, every life is sort of different, right? So I guess the way I tend to start is I guess I look at what the project needs to get done, what it wants, um, and from there I go forward. Um, see, I consider myself a multitasker, so I'll start watching <laughs> Netflix and um, from there I'll have one window for Netflix and one window for images, so that way I can um, put on a movie that might help at least get me into whatever mood or mindset like if it's a romantic film I might turn on or like a romantic drawing I'll turn on romantic films if it's creepy I'll turn on something creepy and from there I'll just try to get the imagery in my head to like get some sort of feeling then I'll swap over to music and sketches so instead of having the images blasted onto me I start blasting images onto a page and have just music going through my brain and after that I decide how intense I start going into the project and either I remember to turn off the music or I keep it in the background. I mean it is definitely possible, I've done it before, I've done it in the past where like I don't need to have something turned on or something in the background or need to look at something I could just doodle or sketch but I feel like some of my best work comes from being able to go at something, you know, do your research. I feel like it's, it's sort of like when you write an essay, you gotta do all your research, you gotta then put it into your own words and get, make sure it's not copyrighted in any sort of way. And then you make it your own and it becomes really strong that way. I like keeping things black and white. I feel like it's easier to understand them that way. But when you start adding color, you get the complications of, well, what if I lay down the wrong color? With black and white, you can only lay down so much. With color, you can, there's an endless amount of possibilities and the chances of picking the wrong one are a lot higher. <laughs> My favorite tool is a pen. You can't go wrong with a pen. You can take it anywhere. It's all the basics just end up coming right back to it. Yeah. I'm trying to stand when I'm working on something if I can. I'm trying to move around. Um, especially, but the, the, the taking breaks is important. Um, I tend to have tendonitis on my right hand, so, you know, I have to give it a little break now and then, otherwise it will just puff up and it'll hurt and I might just end up damaging it further. But it's important even if you don't have, like, some sort of medical condition, because the longer you stare at something so closely, you'll think you're doing it right, but the moment you step away, it's so easy to tell that you're making a mistake and it becomes so easy to see how you could have fixed that like 10, 20 minutes ago and 
if you just bother to look away. It, it is healthy to be able to step away from life, do some stuff, and then come back. Um, because, you know, your mind definitely needs rest in order to get new and fresh ideas. If you just keep working, 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 you're going to feel like you've come to a stump. But um, I think breaks are necessary because when you go on these, I don't know, artist hiatuses of sorts, um, you go away and you're like, oh man, that would be, this would be such a great idea to, or this would be, oh my god, imagine if somebody did this, or you come up with all these ideas and then that urge to create comes back until you're eventually like, you know what, we're done with the break, we're done with the break, we're coming we're back, we're coming back, we're gonna get everything going and started. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's good to have that constant drive to want to just make something. If you just burn yourself out to make things, then at some point your art starts to show it. Is this actually finished? When I feel some sort of resolve, if I feel like there's nothing else I want to add to it. Because I feel like, you know, first you draw something, you get everything in, then you color it, and then you realize you want oh, look, some background atmosphere that maybe you didn't have to do with like the black lines. Then you go in, edit your photos, and you're like, oh, well actually this, this, and this might help out with that. So you go back, you go back in, and... If at some point it feels like you just stop adding things, then I'd say that's when you've come to some sort of result. Um, I, I feel like it's still too soon to talk about projects that are coming out. Um, right now I am in development for a comic book, which would be nice, hopefully that'll be up and going and maybe during the summer we'll actually be able to release it on web two. but um in the meantime as far as like films go uh there is a short film that i'm working on but it probably won't be out for like another year and a half so it's too soon to actually give out any details or say anything on that um to anybody who's just starting out with art or even just continuing um i would definitely say you know don't compare your artwork to other people's artworks, compare it to yourself. Because everybody starts out at different levels, everybody starts at different ages, and everybody catches on to things at different paces and has different ways of learning. And, you know, everybody also, like when it comes to art, you know, they say style isn't Im important, but you do start to notice that people do have a, their own style. And if you start comparing yourself to other people, well, you can't compare styles. <laughs> it's there's no matter of, oh well, you you can't really. It's it's hard to compare something like that. I think what's more important is looking at your own artwork from, I don't know, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, and seeing how you've improved. And if you can see an improvement, then I'd say you're doing something right. <laughs>